We all know that books are vital as structural engineers. However, structural engineering books can be quite pricey, so it's important that you pick up the right ones. So these are my top recommendations of engineering books that you can have. I will be referencing them from different codes, from more of the specific ones that we see in Australia, from more of those general ones. And make sure you stick through to the end, because I've got some unique recommendations on how to improve your soft skills, which is your most important asset. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. If you just need to pick up one book, you need to make sure it's a general book as it needs to cover a broad range of topics. Much like this book here, now this is more of what you would call a desktop book as it is old, but it looks nice on top of your table and has some really amazing pictures. You can see that it's beautifully illustrated with pictures, diagrams and documents. That's what makes it a desktop book, but doesn't mean it's something you should pass up. The one that I would recommend is the Structural Engineering Handbook by Fiona Cobb. It covers a broad range of topics, so normally if you're trying to scheme those buildings, you can have a look at there and get some of that basic knowledge that you need, giving you from all the way from the basic loads to timber, steel and concrete. It covers that broad range, so if you just need to pick up one book, it's that Pocket Engineering Handbook. Now, if you're picking up more specific books, it doesn't mean you should pass it up either, as there's some general rules of thumb and other knowledge that you won't find in those more specific volumes. Now, talking about coffee table books, as engineers, making sure that we got our correct diagrams and drawings is really important. So this is where I would recommend you don't pass up Sketching for Engineers and Architects. And that's an amazing book that not only shows you how you can display your engineering knowledge, but also allows you to have a coffee table book where people can pick it up and look through some of the fascinating images and maybe ask some of those questions. So especially if you're really into engineering like I am, it's something that you need on your coffee table. While you're talking about general knowledge, another thing that you should pick up is how to calculate different deflections from different loading patterns. It's something that you use quite often. So you've got point loads, UDLs, and even combine them together to either get moments or deflections if you superposition the loads on top of each other. So there's a free compendium that's been produced that I'll link up here and in the below description that allows you to pick up a great compendium of knowledge. Quite a lot of people have got it out there and they've offered it for free. So it's something that you should just pick up and have in your literature. This brings us perfectly into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Much like the need to pick up books to help constantly improve our knowledge, Skillshare offers thousands of inspirational video classes where you can learn some of those hard skills and also those soft skills as well. There's a couple of different classes that I would recommend. I've always been banging on about those hard skills such as Python programming. And there's a series of courses in Skillshare that will help you improve that skill set. If you're looking to improve those soft skills, there's many different courses from both those writing skills and also those communication skills. Now, arguably your soft skills is one of your most important assets that will help you progress your career faster. Or if you're just looking for a career change, there's also a lot of different creative courses that are produced on Skillshare as well. The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. I hope to see you over there. Now let's keep learning about the different books that I recommend. Now let's move into some more specific handbooks. And this would be something like a steel designer's handbook. There's no engineer can go throughout their career without designing any steel. There's a number of these that you should probably look at. The first one that I recommend if you're looking at engineering is that more general and broad range topics. Now this is the steel designer's handbook. This one's specifically for AS 4100, so it's for steel design in Australia. However, I'm sure there's similar ones in the US and the UK. So this gives you a broad range of topics from connection designs to steel beam designs to joints, giving you a broad knowledge of what you need to focus on in engineering. The other one I would recommend that you look at is in the Steel Institute of Australia as well, where they have these handy books for connection design. As steel is really all in the connections. So you've got specific ones for cleat plates, fixed connections, base plates. And you can go through there and look at in detail from start to finish through worked examples, making sure you've got a thorough understanding of connections, which is important if you're doing any steel structure. Now, concrete. This is such a broad topic. So you've got from reinforced concrete to post tensioning, you've got columns, beams, walls, and how they behave differently to strut and tie. So I would recommend probably picking up a couple of different books here. However, the first one that I would recommend pretty much covers everything that you need to know about concrete design. 
This book is an easy to understand. It integrates both reinforced concrete and post-tension structures, covering from columns, walls, beams, floors. And not only does it just break it down from what you need in Australian standards, it also breaks down the mechanics. So if you're designing something in the UK or elsewhere, this would be a good handy addition to your knowledge. There's also a new one by Stephen Foster, which is the reinforced basic concrete, which should be updated to the latest standards and the latest knowledge. Stephen Foster is one of the leading engineers within Australia in the concrete field. He will break down the basic mechanics, allowing you to understand concrete structures more thoroughly. Now you may think concrete structures, that's all we need to know. However, there's more bespoke knowledge about concrete structures and mainly about precast design, as opposed to the in-situ concrete that we were just talking about before. I would recommend you picking up some bespoke books around precast design and making sure that you're designing it correctly. And I would go no further than the Precast Handbook by the Precast Institute of Australia. This gives you an in-depth knowledge from precast from start to finish, doesn't matter what parts, whether you're doing hollow core, walls, slabs, it gives you detailed designs on each of the components about how you need to calculate, how you need to analyze it. It's not just focusing on Australian standards here either. It does go into the mechanics and how the loads transfer through these structures. Timber design is something that is up and coming in our future. So it's making sure you're picking up the correct literature when you're learning about timber design, as there's some unique knowledge that you need to have due to the way it behaves and integrates. Timber is an amazing engineered material. And luckily for us, the Wood Solutions has released a unique set of free manuals where you can go in there and learn about timber design, making sure you're from start to finish. See, Wood Solutions has been funded by the Timber Institutes, encouraging engineers to use timber more. So they've taken a lot of time to put together a great compendium on how to design timber, offering it free to the engineering community. I'll have links up here and in the below description that you can find if you're looking at how to find the material from Wood Solutions. And when you get into the more advanced topics, it can be quite hard to find an easy to understand book that covers everything you need. However, Rock Stress and Strain Formulas is one of these books that every engineer needs in their library. You see, it covers the more advanced topics of how structural mechanics actually work, how vibrations are felt through structures, which is really important, especially if you're getting to hospitals or high-end residential. We don't want that floor vibration felt throughout the structure. So raw stress and strain formulas is something that every engineer needs, as it will help you out. You may not think you're ever going to do it, but when you look through it and you see some of the knowledge that it has in there, it's really helpful, and it's helped me out of a couple of jams. So I would recommend you pick up that book. And with the push of structural engineering, pushing stuff off site and moving towards those precast structures, there's another book that you need, which is the time dependent behavior of concrete structures. You see, concrete shrinks and moves as you pour it. So when you pour a precast element, it will shrink before it gets to site. Then if you pour another in situ element on top of it, that will shrink putting additional stresses in it. Luckily, someone's taken the time and knowledge, and this is the time dependent behavior of concrete structures. They'll give you that knowledge to make sure you're not missing everything. You may just think, I've got a concrete up there, I'll pour some concrete on top. There's no additional factors. That's where you'd be wrong. And this is where you need the time-dependent behavior to see how it behaves over time and what those additional stresses and deflections may be in your design. One thing that I would also recommend as well is joining a couple of organizations as they not only give you discounts on lectures that you should be attending regularly to keep up your knowledge, but they also typically produce great magazines and supporting them will allow them to keep producing such works. The first one that I would recommend is joining iStruct-D, which is a UK-based organization all about structural engineering. Not only does it cover the more advanced topics about how to design structures, it has a great compendium of knowledge that you can backtrack after signing in with them, but it also goes into risks and also how to run businesses. So iStruck D is something that I read on a regular basis, listening to lecturers. And even if you're in Australia or overseas, typically they've got little mini organizations which you can sign up to and attend their lectures. So I would recommend you looking out, doesn't matter where you're in the world, to see whether there's a group signed up to iStruck D and the lectures that they're producing. They're typically normally good quality. Their magazines is also worth it. The only thing I'd sign up for would be their magazine let alone all the additional benefits that you get from them. Another one that's also great here in Australia, probably similar to the CIA in the US, is the Concrete Institute of Australia. Now, they're all about concrete structures. Now, they go into more detail and more about advanced knowledge. They've got some great journal articles in here, producing a great compendium of knowledge, 
Not only that, they've also got lectures that you can also get a great discount on. So there'd be two organizations that I'd also recommend you signing up to. Another one that I would recommend now, this is a free one and it produces a newsletter about all those near misses or failures that may not have occurred. And something that we should share regularly as engineers about what we've seen, what we need to do to address it so everyone can learn from it. And Cross offers this. So Cross is the collaborative reporting for safer structures. They got ones in Australia, the UK and all over the world. So I would recommend you signing up to the newsletter to make sure you're learning from the knowledge from others so you don't make the same mistakes. And something else I'd also recommend you do as well is pick up a little hard drive. Now, I would be lost if I lost this. I've got so much knowledge that I've stored over time. It's quite often you pick up different articles or journals that you buy over time and just collecting a compendium of knowledge that you have. Now, when you've got it, making sure you're filing it in the correct way, not just a big pile. So you're saving stuff into concrete design, you're saving stuff into timber design, maybe even creating a little Excel sheet that can reference it. So if you ever need to find something, it's quickly and easy to find. And structural engineering doesn't really change that often. Now, there is new knowledge out there that we need to learn or the general mechanics doesn't. So even something that's old can be very beneficial. So it couldn't go far without having such thing as these hard drives, which nowadays are getting so small. So you don't have an excuse for not throwing it in your bag. Now, we just went through some of the hard skills that you need as structural engineering, and you can see it's a really broad topic. However, this is not your most important asset. Yes, you do need to know it to make sure you're doing it correctly. However, it's more important that you have better communication skills so people can understand you. There's a couple of books that really changed my mindset. The first one is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is a really old book, but he spent a lot of time and knowledge that he's put into that compendium. It's still even relevant today. So I would recommend you picking up and reading it. Now, if you're looking at something with a little bit more of a modern trend, it's never split the difference. Now, this was written by an FBI negotiator, so you can more thoroughly understand people's motivations and how to bring people around to your point of view. So this will help you the communication skills, but also understand some of the motivations behind why people are doing what they're doing. Just because you've got a problem here, you need to understand someone else's problem so you can come to a solution that you both agree to. If you're looking for a more broad range topic on soft skills, there's also another book, Soft is the New Hard, which it covers down different types of communication styles from both verbal and written, and it was really transformative. This is what really set me on the journey of learning those soft skills. The next one is a more of a motivational book, a how you can remove barriers that you've been placing in front of yourself, and that is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Not only is this book great to listen to, there's also some good YouTube videos as well where you can understand the thoughts behind the writer. I would recommend you both picking up the book, listening to it, and listening to some of the feedback of the author through his progression. Engineering can seem quite daunting, especially after you've read all these books, we can see how complex it is. However, structural engineering is really simple. And it's a simple principle that you may not know that will make not only your designs easier and more simple, but give you a better understanding of structural mechanics that I'll link up here. And if you're looking for the 10 essential skills that I think every engineer needs to be successful, I'll link it here as well. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. But I've also set up a YouTube membership if you feel more comfortable supporting my channel through YouTube. I'd just like to give a quick shout out to two of my newest patrons, that's Campbell Wood and Chen Wu Lee. Without your support and support of my other patrons, this type of content would not be possible. As always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.